My name is Yan Kyu Yip. I am a visual artist. I do murals and canvas pieces, fine arts in general. My brand is Yan Kyu Yip Art. This is my logo. Art, I'm a product of Manchester. I have done murals and I'm a fine artist. I do a lot of canvas pieces, especially based on my own experience. I am inspired by math, science, and athletics, actually, as I do a little sprinting. Now, you can find my work in downtown Kingston. You can find works in Montego Bay, Falmouth, St. Thomas, maybe a few other places that I don't remember right now. This is one of my most recent pieces. This is the Manchester Historic Mural. It was done for Jamaica 61, and it basically celebrates different people from Manchester, especially our greats, including Cecil Charlton, who was responsible for, you know, a lot of the development here in Manchester. We have our first Jamaican gold medalist, Mr. Arthur Wint, and the fastest woman alive, Elaine Thompson, who is from Manchester, banana ground, to be exact. So I do murals, I do fine arts, I take commission pieces, I create the best work possible, that is meaningful, you know, something that will last beyond time to inspire the next generation. Hi, Andrew. Tell us about how did you get into painting? Well, it initiated in actually before high school. I I knew I was gifted early on, so I used to draw at home. And then when there was like leftover paint, I would take the opportunity to paint. Maybe the chicken coop door or some wall that's outside that's not on the house. And you said in high school and college you were interested in science and art is, is science, right? Yes, in in some some context people differentiate them, but they are essentially one and the same because art is more experimental while the science seems to be more fact based, generally speaking. But then you have to create experiments in order to arrive at results. So basically, science is initially art before it becomes established science to an extent. And you said that it's much as well with the different shapes. Yes. In fact, there were great artists who actually could have made a significant contribution in, in, in the field of math. In fact, we had, we had um, scientists who were artists. For example, Leonardo da Vinci, um, Albert Durer, would have made great contribution as it relates to developing the idea of perspective which is basically creating 3d on a 2d surface and um you know he chose to spend more time doing art and that's that's the thing that really prevents great scientists from being artists or great artists from being great recognized as great scientists um they had to make a choice what would they spend more time on what field would they develop more of um, Leonardo da Vinci would have made significant contribution to many different fields. He, he was called a polymath, and a polymath is someone who literally learns about everything. And um, he made significant contribution right across the board: science, music, art, and he was even considered an athlete. So, you know, he was one of those unusual persons who made a great impact across many different fields during his time. That's pretty interesting. And you said that you have an interest in the sprint, the sport, the second field. Yes, I actually have a goal. It's called Operation 899. It's the first time I'm seeing it publicly. Yeah. And you can probably figure out what that means. But essentially, I train as a sprinter. Um, outside of art, if I'm not doing art, I'm sprinting. Um, outside of that, I'm interested in the field of agriculture. 
So my science degree, well not degree, but my science background contributes to my development. So I mean, food is the most basic, fundamental thing. So that's the practical aspect of my life as a, as a human being. I would say if it's not art, it's farming or it's track and field. Yes, yes. Okay. What's the best thing, uh, what are some of the things you grow? Uh, as a um so interestingly i i developed a company it's called sotir we we made headline a few times while i was in college and um actually represented jamaica at what was called the international business model competition um currently it's on hold because i'm focusing more on art yeah and it's a bit challenging to to balance especially when it's hard to find you know workers who will follow instructions carry out the mission that you want them to carry out consistently because yeah. some people start and then they, they don't follow through so what i'm doing now is just focusing on art um at a certain point when i have the time and the resources then i will just put the energy into manifesting you know that dream of developing hydroponics for growing roots and tubers which is what our idea was all about wow. right so yams, Irish potato, being grown hydroponically versus the traditional method, which is tedious. It's very hard. Um, and with the aging farmers population, we will have to find alternatives because not a lot of people want to go to the hills in Lower River, Trilani to, to plant yam. So food security is a, is a very critical point where that is concerned. You're pretty passionate about what you do. Sounds like you love your country, you love your people. You want people to live well and eat well. That's and, right. Yes. That's yeah. really good. They're true Jamaica, <laughs> I would say. I appreciate that. <laughs> now, tell us about your project. Some of the projects you've done. You've been downtown Kingston. They're renovating downtown Kingston, Kingston Creative. Yes. Making it the hub of art and creativity. We have so much culture here. Downtown is one of the places where people free it up. But right. things are changing down there and you're a part of that. Now tell us about some of the work we've done downtown. Okay, so actually I started out with Sabrina Park. That was the that was a project for celebrating the cricketers of Jamaica. So that was my first involvement in getting to Kingston. And I did four of the cricketers along Sabina Wa, uh, Chris Gill, Ben Alshim, um, Lattie Scott, Vivalin Lattie Scott, and Stephen Buckner. So I did those four paintings at Sabina. And fortunately, they had uh, the Jamaica Legacy, Jamaica 60 Legacy Project, main project, which was actually done at Carib Cement later that same year. And I was one of the three Jamaican artists who were recruited to assist the Mexican artist um, on that project. So that was a, a very useful um, experience painting at that scale. It's the biggest project I've worked on. And that led to a few commissions down the line. Yeah. And um, from there on, I realized that murals, you know, was a big deal. Yeah. I met um, the leader or the founder, co founder for Kingston Creative back in 2019. Actually, I was introduced to her because of my agricultural venture. I met an engineer who was neighbor to her, so he introduced me to her. And I met her in 2019. Of course, COVID 19 came in 2020, everything was on a flat line, so nothing really happened with the connection. But then we re met after this there was some mural call you know got in the circles um, visited their events and then of course seeing my work i did a mural for the mayor of kingston on church street john holt and a few other murals and then knowing about kingston creative more and more you know open calls applied they saw the work they were interested commissioned the mural i did one close to Air jamaica building i don't remember that street name but it's along water lane which is where they have most of the murals and from there on 
you know, I've just continued the work of doing murals. Yeah. Yankee, you've been out a lot and you're just 31 years old. You don't sleep. Uh, well, I do sleep. I, I actually prioritize sleep. <laughs> but I wake up very early and I start my day by 6 o'clock most times. Sometimes 5. Um, I train like 5 o'clock to maybe 6.30. Oh, and I have sprints. And then I'm on to the artistic mission for the rest of the day until I can't see the wall. And in some cases, I use artificial lighting, you know, to complete the work. Um, you said that, how would you, um, what would you say about discipline being a big part of who you are and how you achieve it? That's the seasoning for success. Discipline is a seasoning for success. Yeah. There are five words that I apply to my experience and they are consistency, authenticity, which is being true to yourself, persistence, excellence, which is striving for the best result, which is actually represented by gold for me. That's why I use the, the, the gold for my logo and also discipline. So the, the letters together, I abbreviated CAPED. And I also change it, eventually I change it to paste, P-A-C-E-D. So it's persistence, authenticity, consistency, excellence, discipline. So that applies to my whole running goal, Operation 899, right? So that guides everything that I do. And um, discipline requires time. If you don't have the time, if you don't make the time, you won't achieve the result. Yeah. And that's why it's a seasoning for success. You have to apply it. Regardless of how much hard work you've been doing, you can become inconsistent because of lack of discipline. Yeah. You feel tired or something comes up and you don't feel like it today, that's when you should do it. Because if you don't do it, then you're going to break the success or the journey that you have built and pause your progress, basically. So how are you so wise? <laughs> are you parents <laughs> I think it's experience, trial and error, um, and being unwise for years. That's something. Yes. So what's your family background like? So, straight up, I am not connected to my father's side, which is my surname, Deep. I have grown with my mom, my grandma, so only grandma, only grandparent I have. Um, she had a very great influence earlier and my uncle who is a farmer as well of course my mom would have grown me as a single mom pretty much yeah. had a stepfather along the way um which he was impactful for my life as well so i have an aunt Gillian carter she's she was pivotal for my development because she was um she was my big sister basically so she went to university she was the first university graduate and um, what she did was to help to guide me along the way, you know, to go after my dreams. And um, yeah, that, that support, that guidance, that, that critical adolescence era. If, if it wasn't for that, I might have gone another route. I probably would have been in the army, which I did apply for <laughs> at one point. Um, I didn't do the test because I was encouraged to do university. So, yeah. So she was, she was critical for my development. Are yeah. you glad you took the path of university? I am happy I did. Um, I think I went to university for one main reason, and that was to develop my agricultural company. That was the main takeaway from university, not the degree, because I haven't finished. <laughs> I might finish, but yeah, I've gotten enough from university so far. So, grow food as a father, and um, a lot of people don't know that Jamaicans are out of many we're melting pot operators, right? Yes. So of course they're gonna see you. Some of our subscribers like to you and say, You really are Jamaican, you look like Chinese. <laughs> right? Well that has been a, a challenge. It's not a challenge because uh, you know people will have their opinions and there's no point in trying to convince anyone. I just do what I need to do, get get what I need to get done. A lot of people call me Rasta though for some reason. Maybe it's a beard or the hair. Yeah, most people call me Rasta. I guess because I bring a Rasta energy. Uh, yeah. My favorite uncle, Wayne Spencer, you know, he has an imp he has had an impact from earlier. In fact, I used to be on the farm with him. 
when most kids would be playing football or something like that. Yeah. I would be running up and down in the farm, eating as much food as I want. And that's one of the reasons why I want to establish this agricultural company. And for me, it's not even about business, it's about sustainability for the generations to come. Because I grew up seeing tangerine trees in Redberry. There are no tangerine trees in Redberry, no? There are no tangerine. Tangerine. Oh, so that's a concern for you. It's a concern because I had the opportunity to eat fruits of the tree easily. But I've, I've noticed that over the years we've dwindled in terms of productivity. And, um, you know, that's a, that's a very concerning situation. Yeah, yeah. Well, I understand. Um, I mean, I wish more people would go into agriculture and realize that you know, food is life. And it can be pretty profitable. Yeah. Yes. You just have to stop, have to speak, man. It's farming, that it's dirty work. They know people are going to the sun, but there are, there are many ways to, you know, work out with that. Yes. Now, who is your family background? Because one of the things we do at Destiny and Jamaica is educate people about Jamaica. Right. So you have in your bloodline, who's the Chinese in your family? Your dad? So my dad is a Chinese, and his name, his surname is Yip. Um, in fact, I've been told by my mom that his great grand great great grandfather, I don't remember exactly which part, but Yip Man is a popular, he's been celebrated a lot. Um, in fact, he was Bruce Lee's, one of Bruce Lee's teachers. So I've been told that I'm related to him some generation up the line. I don't. I haven't been able to meet anyone from that side, so I can't say for sure, but that's what I've been told. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I can't say for sure, right? Um, my mom is Spencer. So I think her side of the family came... Which country was it? I don't remember right now. Not Africa? It's some... Her Spencer, the Spencer side, which is her father's side, which are related to the vase. The vase would be the grandmother's side. So those, they're kind of like, tell you what, some Irish kind of vibe. Irish? Some, some, something like that. Oh, okay. um, and then my grandma is, she's Williamson. She's from Clarendon. She was a farmer. She's a, a maroon black, physically, woman. So, you know, I'm pretty mixed up as it, as it relates to genetics. Yeah. yeah. So how do you deal with that? Do you find it conflicting as, uh, as a person? Because, you know, the world is getting more and more aware about what we're made up of and more concerned. It's not enough to just say you're a Jamaican. A lot of Jamaicans do identify with just being black right. Africa, right? Um, I don't have an issue. I mean, I, I, I accept my multi-racial quality and I think it, it allows me to blend in pretty much anywhere I am. Um, I don't identify, I don't identify as Chinese or black or anything. Well, I'm I'm going to say I'm black most times <laughs> because of how I was brought up. Yeah. But um, essentially, I just wish that you know we can live as one, as Bob, as Marcus Garvey would have preached. Um, you know, there's dirty background, dirty history, the things that would have do been done. You know. And it's 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 not good. It leaves a bit bitter taste, and I don't think that bitter taste will ever go. You know, given what has actually happened and the consequences thereof. But I try to move forward in every situation because we all have challenges individually. Um, that's what life is. Life is life is a challenge. Yeah, that's what we Yeah. Right to the occasion. That's right. Now you said that when the process is done, when the painting is done, people can appreciate it. Right. But before it looks like a mess. Yes, always. Right, right now it's like, okay, what's happening here? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, I'm using this like oil paint because I'm not using the water yeah. this time. Yeah. Um, but 
demonstration. A lot of things that people don't realize, well, a lot of things that people say for creative is that it can be a struggle to survive. Being an artist, a writer, you know, because it's hard to get projects, it's hard to get money. People see your work and want it for free. Yeah. You don't understand the time and the effort and the materials that you put in. What has been your experience surviving on art? All right, so I actually started doing art full time just March of this year because I was always doing something else along with art. Of course, there would have been times when I didn't do any other thing, but I got art job, but I wasn't necessarily taking it as seriously then as I am now. Um, do good work and the work will speak for itself and then try to get the good work in, in front of the audience that actually wants good work um, and that includes getting involved with art competitions getting involved with um, communities that art communities art groups because i actually started an art group and it consisted of people who went on to do full-time art people who actually studied at edna manley and what it did for me was to connect me with people who they were connected with and then because of that I ended up getting into the circles that they were in which is why I ended up at Sabina Park in the first place a friend of mine his name is Anthony Smith he goes by the title Thousand so he was the one who invited me to be a part of that project and I would say that was the genesis for me in terms of doing murals island wide and you know tapping into the international market. I haven't really reaped from that yet, but we've been crossing, you know, the waters so far in, same, you know, in, in one context. Okay. Well, yeah. you mentioned murals. How difficult it is to paint on a wall versus a canvas? Or what's the difference in process as well? The, the wall can be anywhere and you can't move that wall. So you have to work with whatever conditions are there. For example, the Sabayana Park project was really difficult because it was really hot. It was facing the sun most of the day. And, um, you know, you had to cover your neck, cover your hands to prevent sunburns. Canvas piece, I can go inside. I can do it at night. I can do it when it's early morning, whichever. And rain doesn't affect me. But outside in this mural, we had so many days of rain and wind. You know we couldn't control it so we had to leave it. sometimes you can't do anything you have to leave it so in terms of meeting timelines a mural is a little more difficult so what we do as artists is to give ourselves like probably two times the time span that we would need to actually complete the mural um to detail level yeah do you prefer to draw on walls and canvases? Uh, there is no preference really in terms of doing because um, they both have their advantages. I'd say murals have been have become my favorite because it's more connected to the people. They are seeing you and they are communicating with you. And the feedback is good because you understand the people from the creation of your work while you're creating it. And then there are times when you impact someone to the point where they cry, you know, because of the emotional attachment to the content of the mural. And that's always a, a great experience for me when, when I can leave an impact like that. Let's talk about the inspiration. Who inspires you are, and which artists are you? All right. So there are three artists that I I really love their work. So Leonardo da Vinci would have been the the first um, impactful one. He's the one who allowed me to see that you can do your science and you can still do your art. Because at, at one point I thought it was like just do one career choice or just to focus on one single thing and it's totally different from everything else. So there is no way for things to, to be um, related. So he would have been the first big step in me, being confident that I can do art and I, and I can do sciences. Then there is Albert Durer. He did a lot of self-portraits. 
and I think that influenced me into painting more of myself, looking in the mirror and doing more self-portraits, more drawings of my physical self. Um, then there was MC Escher. MC Escher, he did a lot of work with geometry. He contributed a lot to how perspective is altered to create this illusion of something going forward coming back you know optical illusion and geometry to an extent so those three artists would have had a significant impact on the way i create art now i met barrington watson um once and i asked him his i asked him a question i said what is your philosophy his response was only the maximum is good enough so that was an important point for me and these works speak for themselves you know and there i cannot leave out this one artist <laughs> my art teacher for seven years at knox college mr neville thompson he gave me the best education as it is the visual arts that i could achieve and um i'll be eternally grateful you know for his contribution to my experience in high school All right, so you mentioned Barrington Watson's philosophy. What's yours? So my philosophy is your infinite progression. Your what? Your infinite progression. It initially was knowledge is infinite, so is power, which was taken from knowledge is power. But I wanted to extend the quality of the knowledge and how it applies. So I brought it to knowledge is infinite, so is power which means you are capable of doing anything you want to do as long as you put in the work and then your infinite progression which is the summary of all of that and then it's actually an abbreviation yip no. your infinite progression so it's <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a way of showing my brand as well yeah. right but it's not yeah. personalized it's generalized so it's your whoever you are it's your infinite progression because i believe in the ability to move forward and get better as you go along in whatever field you're involved with okay how do you deal with challenges i accept them you accept your challenges yes first i have to accept that the challenge is a challenge and i have to deal with it because when we deny that a challenge is a challenge then the challenge is not addressed as it should so the first thing i do is accept it um i do write my thoughts so if it's a really rough challenge that i need to look at from a, a higher perspective i will reason with myself and write my ideas almost scientific like put the different points the different factors to see the idea from a higher level instead of being in the situation and puzzling because when you're back and forth with thoughts you don't really get to move on the path that you need to go on because you'll be wasting time just circulating thoughts about the situation so i and i've been through you know relatively challenging challenges um last year i had an accident i, I crashed my first vehicle um was doing too much it's tired three and a half hour journey um and then there was a situation of not wanting to tell my mom because i didn't want her to worry someone circulated it on tiktok circulated yeah it? someone uh, circulated it on tiktok and that was probably the worst situation because i wasn't well the good thing about it is that i was in the video and i was okay so i'm glad that they saw that part that i was good all right um added to that you know I, I didn't get that vehicle sorted out insurance wise as i should have so i had to deal with you know the expenses and so forth but you know could have been worse i could have gotten hurt i didn't get a scratch from that accident um and i moved forward and i'm just doing what i need to do you know so that was what was one of the biggest challenges last year you know i bought that vehicle so i could move around to do more work you know 
Um, but I'm here so I can get another one. You know. Just as long as you have life, you have everything. That's right. That okay, is right. Well, we're happy here with you. We're happy to work with her. Well, and that's the first thing I checked on. When I, because I fell asleep on the, the airbag woke me up when it hit me in the chest. And I came out of the vehicle when I realized that I was in an accident. But initially I was like, this must be a dream. You know, I went over to the vehicle that I had collided with and I checked if people were okay. They were okay. So I was happy then. And then, you know, that's where I started to just accept that this happened. Yeah. You know, um, I'll never ever do that again. I'll never go on a journey like that, being tired. And the added factor is that I don't feel sleepy when I'm in a vehicle because of that. You know, so it's almost like a, a feedback for me. Um, earlier this year, last year actually, I had an eye injury. So I wasn't able to see through my right eye because I was on the farm and I was wearing my, my glasses. And um, the stick hit the eye directly. And I, I was without sight in my right eye for about two weeks. And the funny thing is, I had a project in Montego Bay. I had a mural to, to do and I was supposed to submit a design. I wasn't finished doing the design. So I had to do that design with one eye. One eye? Yeah. It was pretty difficult, but I pulled through. Ended up, I got to do the project. And, you know, the mural is there at Clock, clock Tower. Um, yeah. Comes back to your side thing that you see, right? And so forth. Yes. Now, tell us about this piece right here. Mm. So this piece was done. I designed this piece in December 2021, November slash December 2021. Um, I was going through a little sadness at the time. But then I decided to manifest a sense of inner power, inner energy, like a recharge. And that's where I got the idea to involve sacred geometry in my work, right? So sacred geometry has to do with the principles of life, um, the origins of everything else. Everything has, has fundamental structures and those structures reduce to these forms that you see here. So you have forms like the tetrahedron, the cube, the octahedron, the dodecahedron, and the icosahedron. And then there's a fourth one, a fifth, sixth one called the cube octahedron. All right. Um, and I discovered a few things about these forms. They apply to science in many ways. They apply to math in many ways. In fact, the word formula has its origin based on these. So when you do math and you say formula, quadratic formula or this formula, it's based on forms. And you can understand math more readily if you understand these forms. That's why they teach you about shapes, triangle, square, circle. Those are like the alphabets, the letters of the alphabet for math, in a sense, and geometry. Have you ever thought to be a <laughs> I did teach for two years. I was teaching during COVID because art commissions were low and I needed to do other things. So I accepted a visual arts position as teacher and taught for two years. But unfortunately, the students generally didn't want to learn. At least they didn't want to learn when I was teaching. So I wasn't making an impact in the way that I really wanted to. There were a few students, but it wasn't enough for me to stay because I felt like I was giving my energy, but it wasn't being fruitful, you know? So I decided to, to walk away from the position after a year and a few months, almost two years. Right. Now, what makes you a proud Manchester? What does it call Manchesterian. Manchesterian, yeah. Well, 
I mean, it's a bias because of the fact that I grew up here and what I'm used to is, is nice, it's okay. I mean, we have beautiful weather, farming is good. I can, I can walk late on the road pretty much. You know, it's not as dangerous as some other years or volatile in some ways. Um, I think the farming is one of the things that makes Manchester a, a good place for me. The agriculture is, is fairly good. East Indian? Yeah. Yeah, some mango types, they don't grow so well here. But I'm actually, I have an East Indian tree at home that I've been fighting it for oh, two years now. Two years? Yeah, so it's still very short. Yeah, Julie Mango do well. Um, but in terms of crops, bananas, planting, um, corn, sweet potato. I mean, most things that grow other places can be grown here, but it all depends on the area. For example, there's an area in course called um, Keda. It's close to the community center. It's almost basically in the it's a valley, pretty much. Not, not a valley, it's like a plain. So the surrounding hills, you know, based on ge geography and weathering, the soil is pretty fertile, so that place produces most things quite well. Someone said on TikTok, I am in Manchester. You can press your PML 458. <laughs> <laughs> so the Manchester and over here, so the talent is bad. Talking of talent in Manchester, you know, have a lot. I was surprised that Garnet Sill, Elaine Thompson, Leela Aike, um, there's Susu Charlton, but everybody know him, Arthur Wint, um, Sherry, Sherry Lee Ralph, I didn't know she was from Manchester. Yes. But your mural over here has shown all the greats, or uh, no, not all the greats, because Leela Aike is the funny. Uh, well, I think I think generationally we would have emphasized on it's a bit biased in terms of the the people who are there. It's a lot of sports people. Yeah. Me because I'm the artist. <laughs> but we couldn't put everyone per se. And um the research wasn't extensive. So I'm just knowing that Lila like it was Manchester. Uh, yeah. Um, right. Okay. But I know, I mean, there are many other walls. If a, a wall exists in Christiana, we can do a mural for Christiana. That would be so awesome. I think every parish should have at least one of these murals showing the, some of the graves. You can do all of them, but there are so many graves in from each parish. I saw um, Hans Department doing a dance video with people from St. Thomas. You know, at Okay, I think I saw that video as well. Yeah. Yeah. So big up Manchester, it is a beautiful, cool, nice parish. The people are friendly. And also it's a great vibe here. Look, look at people just walking. It's not too hot. It can be really, really, really cold. How you deal with the cold? Uh where I am it's not that cold. Mandeville is much colder than worse. You know. I mean, I'm not afraid of the cold water either, so I actually enjoy the cold water. I don't know if it's a Kingston tea, but we like hot water. <laughs> Kingston people don't like hot water. All right, I have a question that I realized about Manchester. Let me see if your bias or crap is the best. Which party you prefer? Juice and beef or KFC? Uh, not a, I'm not a party person, but um, the beef party at um, Juicy is, is nicer to me. Juicy? Yeah, the juicy beef. You know, so I think KFC shut down the other day. I hear that Juicy is a, Manchester is a juicy part. Mm. Everybody might ask for Manchester to them not juicy. Mm -mm. But to me... I think we have like four outlets. Yeah. Four juicy yeah, outlets. Big outlets in Manchester. Um, what are some of the best things about Manchester? Because a lot of people don't know, you know, the parishes outside of their own. What are some of the best things? Or uh, what are some of the things people can do to visit this parish? We have a few rivers in course. 
Um, not major, big. Uh, it's really streams, but you can swim in them. We, we call them river, but they're not physically at the size of what rivers really are. But you can swim in. So they have a place called. Um, no, no, Noisy River. I've been to Noisy River. It is in Manchester. Um, Gentles Beach. No, no, I don't remember the name right now. But there are few streams that it's almost like hidden beauty because it's not popular. At least it wasn't. It's probably getting more popular now. Um, the football culture here is big, especially in Porus. I love football events more than track and field. So I'll be on the field in the mornings and then everybody else will be playing football. I'll be sprinting. <laughs> you know. Um, you know when I was younger it was a lot more exciting because even basketball used to be played in course. So I learned to play basketball. Uh, and nowadays it's it's really people on their phones. Yeah, I mean, it's the older guys and a few of the youngsters who really, really love football, like, for example, will be out there playing. But it has gotten less and less to, uh, to an extent. Um, I think we're more isolated now, individually, than back then. But we still have events. We still have Mr. Persad, for example, in Porus, he puts on a football night match. So people look forward to that. Um, annually, I think there's an under 15 as well put on by Mr. Barnett. Um, and I've tried to stage a few art exhibitions in Porus. Some of them turn out really well. I didn't get much sales <laughs> um, because of the audience type. Um, in Mandeville, you have the Bosco Art Fair, which happens annually. So, you know, if you're an art lover, you can visit that show. It's in November, I think. The 9th to the 13th, they are both, most years. Then there's the university, NCU, which is, you know, the closest university to this side of Jamaica, or this center of Jamaica. Um, so that adds value to the community, or I mean, to the parish significantly. It brings people from all over the island and all over the world. So you have, you know, a lot of foreigners settling here in Mandeville because of university. Okay. Yeah, that's all I can think of for right now. Manchester is like a chill park. You come here for relax, get away from the hustle and bustle, especially if you're from Kingston. Yes. And you can visit like St. Elizabeth, Black River, um, Wyatt's Falls, and come back to Manchester from rest because the birds are here. It's cool, it's nice, it's relaxing. Yes. Now, somebody said on TikTok that. Tell me a silly and Danny Newman. You can tell Danny Newman. And GLM 453. So they them pick them three at the bottom. Oh, alright. Bless up. He said respect. Alright, so we're gonna ask him more questions and we're gonna close the interview. You did a Marcus Garvey piece. Right. I love Marcus Garvey, I love his philosophy. Yes. Um, what's your thoughts uh, on Marcus Garvey? Marcus Garvey was the first to do what he did for Jamaica on that scale. And I think he inspired a lot of persons, in, in, including Bob Marley, Martin Luther King, um, Malcolm X, and all the other guys that followed him because he was brave, he was bold. And I think that's what stands out for me. He didn't care of the consequences. He did what he believed was the right thing to do and no one could stop him. And in fact, when I read about him, I realized, based on the documentary, that his father, for whatever reason, left him in a grave. His father left him in a grave? In the hole. And it taught him a lesson to not trust from early on. So I think that built his self-confidence, you know, just to believe in what he's doing and not to basically give in to every suggestion that he, he gets. Um, some would say that was ultimately his downfall, but I believe that he did all that he could have done with the power that he had. And what he created was the ability, or at least encourage the black man to look within 
instead of looking outside for help you know and i think that's not just a race thing it's an individual thing it's what we should all do initially you know instead of us instead of accepting everything we should question it and see where the principles line up the principles don't line up and it's not doing what it's supposed to do then you make the adjustments or you make the pivot you change it all together because if it doesn't work there's no point in, in bringing it forward um, we'll have more people on the live. Tell them where they can find you just in case they want to support your work. Just mention it again. Any expeditions you have coming up? Um, you can find me online. You can DM me. Instagram. TikTok too. Um, Yan Q Yip Art. That's my Instagram handle. And also on YouTube. Same handle. Yan Q Yip Art. I post as often as I can. You know, my posts are meaningful. I don't just do it for the entertainment. So it's, you know, that infinite progression philosophy. So I try to encourage individuals as much as I can, you know, sharing my experience, my thoughts, and embedding them in the artwork as well. And then whoever that impacts, then, you know, that's good. That's, it's all about putting positive energy out there. We need more positive energy. So that's what's going on. Thank you. Anything you have to say to the young people or anybody who wants to pursue art or agriculture? Or strength? Uh, <laughs> it, takes, it takes consistency. It takes being true to yourself, knowing that that's what you really want to do. It takes persistence. And I use I describe persistence as permanent consistency, literally, because you can be consistent, but when a serious thing happens, something like you'd never expect, and it throws you off balance altogether, is it going to stop you? That all comes back to how persistent you are and following through on what you already started. The excellence is sought after. You have to strive for that. You have to go for goal. You have to have an objective. And then the discipline is where it, it, it comes down. Keeping, sticking to what you have started. And believing in it. Because discipline is internal as, as much as it is external. Yeah, pretty much. Someone say you're a real young man. Bless up. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thanks. He said thanks, Daniel. You are. At 31 years old, you're pretty insightful. You've learned and done a lot that you would have done in your 40s and 50s. And young people need to see more of this. You're not a cloak face chaser. You're actually different. <laughs> Maybe an old soul. Old soul, as you all right, so we're going to close the interview in a few. Tell us about the pricing of your art. So I do quite a few different types of artworks. Um, I do portraits starting at a minimum of 30k. That's my minimum value for a portrait, just doing a portrait. Um, that scales up, you know. Um, mirrors, it's cost based on square footage. I go for $2,300 per square foot. Um, that's in line with the year. So each year my value should grow up. So 2024 it should be 2400 per square foot. And of course it depends on the client sometimes and the purpose of the project. So if there's a project that I feel really connected to and it's impactful, I can give a, a significant discount. Right? In some cases I can do it for free if I see the impact that it will make. And of course in the long run I try to do the best work so I'm as marketable as possible to the other clients. Um, I take commissions for inspirational pieces. So if there is a, a memory, if there is a thought, if there is a, a philosophy that's connected to the work that you want to be created, then I'll create that piece and, you know, encapsulate as much of what you want to express or represent. Okay. Yeah. 
and there are, you sell prints as well of your work. I have ventured into prints, and I'm not sure if I will, to be honest. Oh, yeah. um, maybe prints for shirts or so, but not copied canvas piece. Because I believe that each work should be useful to that individual in a way that it's not generalized. You know, it's customized and it's it's unique to you. And that's what allows me to be able to price my work because I'm not going to multiply a work and listen the, the, the cost. Um, and I don't have a problem with prints per se, you know. But for me, it's it's like each work is is a stamping time. It's a it's a moment. It's a, an experience, and there's no other parallel to that within that specific, you know, interaction that customer, for example. Someone said this is the, the top queen art. Top queen. <laughs> that was years ago. Years ago. Well, years ago. Yeah. Um. Yeah, though, that was back in the days when I, you know, didn't get certain commissions. I wasn't accessing certain aspects of the market. And I was in college, so I was just doing it on the side just to, you know, have some lunch money here or fear there or, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, definitely understand. As a creative, we sometimes we work for free even though we don't have the money we sell for a little bit because yes. of the passion and the love that we have for the art. Two more questions to go. Where do you see your art going? In the next year, in the next five years, in the next ten years? Well, I'll get to a national level where my art is seen locally as premier artwork like Basil Watson or Barrington Watson and then on the international level my aim is to be the best I can be and hopefully that will take me to a level like Leonardo da Vinci um, having a timeless impact you know on the rest of generations to come yes. yeah as Marcus Garvey said time and measurement yes you and the last question what's your vision for Jamaica because I know you want a better job wow I want to see a Jamaica where people don't have to hustle up to get some food and to hustle too much to get some food to eat, to be able to live comfortably. I want to see a Jamaica where we, we actually prioritize purpose instead of just going with the fashion of every other country or just doing things because it looks good. It should be function first and then fashion after. I need to see a Jamaica where I don't have to worry about my goats outside in the pen a few meters, couple meters from where I live. I don't have to be checking on them every second or setting up surveillance camera. You know, I want to see a Jamaica where we just live fairly. Um, honestly, we are diligent. You know, we, we do the work that we need to do to get the results that we need to get and not to make shortcuts and to chop the line. Yeah, the chop line thing needs to stop. It's not sustainable and we will eventually cut our own necks as a nation if we continue and that's not just for the so-called local scammers but it's also for the corporate scammers because as we would have seen with the Usain Bolt case sad you know a legend like that should never have experienced something like that yeah yeah, okay. yeah. I agree with you I want to see a Jamaica where Get a people can't eat healthy food. We don't have diabetes and lifestyle poisoning. We don't have to worry about food and the food security. And I just make how people can be happy, healthy, safe. Because we love people. We are such a special you can't be doing your art, doing your agriculture. We are undeniably special, diligent. We work the best things in life. And I want to work. Like Marcus Garvey, we want our people to get the best. So, thank you so much. Appreciate it. That's it for the TikTok Live. Thank you, viewers, for joining us. Do remember to support Jamaican artists. 
support Jamaican brands and creativity. Support this young man who is young <laughs> but doing great phenomenal things. Also, um, you know, different kind of person that the nation needs. Big up the talent, the rise up Jamaican, and together we can do anything. So thank you all. We're gonna close the live now. Do you want to say anything to them before we go? On the TikTok live. Big up on yourself. Big up on yourself. <laughs> I got